So some pretty awesome new 40k reveals today. New Dark Angels, Night Lords, Necrons and more. Let's go through all the new kits revealed at Games Workshop's World Champion stream. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today I think that Games Workshop's given us a pretty reasonable preview. This one was going to be a big and varied one, with 7 different gaming systems on offer, but I feel like Warhammer 40k has got themselves some fairly generous reveals. Maybe no entire major range releases, or being revealed all at once, but lots of stuff that's going to be interesting to plenty of people's factions, and even a couple of the tangential things like Necromunda and Heresy, they could be quite good for Warhammer 40k as well. This stream came from Games Workshop's World Championships of Warhammer, broadcast at 10pm over in the USA, translating to between 3 and 4am here in the UK, bit of an early morning for me, but at least they showed off some fun stuff that made it worth it. Going through the major reveals for the Necrons, we've got a new miniature for Orican the Diviner, much teased and now he's finally here. They also have a Crusade book dropping alongside their codex, venturing into the Pariah Nexus. For the Dark Angels, we didn't get an entire range release, but two different miniature releases, the Interrogator Chaplain Asmodai, again he'd been teased quite a bit, and the Deathwing Knights miniatures revealed in full, they'd been leaked earlier in the day. Games Workshop did basically confirm as well that the Dark Angels would be getting a major release, and it wouldn't just be these as well, that was definitely heavily suspected, and now it's essentially confirmed via their hints. Otherwise, we've got a Kill Team Upgrade Sprue for Night Lords that tacks on to the generic Chaos Legionary kit. Though as Upgrade Sprues go, I think it looks like a pretty good one. The miniatures look really quite nice, I think. Or at least as nice as sadistic murderers that flay people's skin can get. They've unveiled the two next codexes for Warhammer 40k. The ones coming in summer 2024 are Genes to the Colts and Sisters of Battle, plus a mysteriously redacted one, which is all very intriguing. And I'd say that compared with some of the other releases they might have had, the Horus Heresy and Necromunda releases are pretty cool for 40k as well. They've got Heresy Era Assault Marines, which are pretty relevant both for the Chaos Space Marine Raptors or Space Marine Jump Intercessors you could use them as. And there's a bit of a curveball in Necromunda with a Taurus Venator being released, an order out of production resin forge world miniature for the Imperial Guard, finding a new home for Necromunda's enforcers. Loads to talk about, so let's jump through one by one. First up, let's start with the Necrons, and as Games Workshop had been teasing for really quite a while now, we finally get a new Orican the Diviner. They dropped very heavy hints to his miniature in a Rumor Engine teaser a while back, even if the actual picture dropped in that one was actually of the Necron Lord with the transdimensional cloak. Nice to see that Orican's getting a reincarnation here, he's one of the more popular Necron characters given that he was well known from the Infinite and Divine. And it is nice that he's being saved from some sort of fine cast oblivion, seeing that we know that we are losing some Necron units in the new book, as there's fewer data sheets compared with the ones than there are in the current index. I feel like maybe his miniature isn't the most different or adventurous, but still pretty cool. His staff and canoptex style tail is kind of similar to his current miniature, though his pose is a bit different, and he seems to have found himself a fun Rubik's Cube to play with in his other hand now. Looks pretty cool, and I think he was a pretty necessary update given that his old miniature I didn't think was quite as good as some of the other Necron sculpts that they had going for them. Here's a few other shots of him, including his cloak thing from the back, that does look very Canoptech type tech, and he's got a few small little scarabs on the base there as well I see. And here is the old model versus the new model, I did feel like that one was just a bit of a strange pose, but still a pretty awesome character for miniature, and most of the design elements remain pretty much broadly the same, but just brought into modern plastic rather than older fine cast. Pretty solid update, and that means that so far we've got three different Necron characters coming out with the codex, unless Games Workshop decides to drop us a curveball and give us more. Otherwise, there was one small mention for a book to come outside alongside the Necron Codex in the Pariah Nexus Crusade book. This one's a narrative expansion for fighting battles in that sort of cursed area of space, where the Necrons shut off all communication with the warp, and their blackstone pylons can gradually lead to humans and other sentient races just having no will to continue living anymore, or very sinister indeed. I guess that this one might have a bit more of an update as to the narrative of the battles that were unfolding in that. I feel like that was quite a big deal in the setup and the start of 9th edition 40k. Indomitus Crusade fleets discovering the thing and launching expeditions within its boundaries. Apparently the main narrative thrust of it will largely be Necrons versus Adeptus Mechanicus, though apparently the rules will be fairly appropriate for Necrons versus any Imperial faction. 
I guess if you're a Necron Crusade player, then you're getting quite a lot of content all at the same time here, as they'll also have the Crusade section within their own codex when it comes out. Dark Angels next, and we knew that there was content coming for them given Games Workshop's teasers, plus the leaked Deathwing Knights from earlier in the day. First up though, we did get another one that people were softly expecting. Chaplain Asmodai is here, and he seems to have found himself a dirty great big sword. The grim and merciless interrogator Chaplain of the Dark Angels is here, and he doesn't look amused. Asmodai is one of the character miniatures of the Dark Angels that goes back a very long time now. Again, one that definitely needs an update coming at some stage, so glad that that's arrived. I'm sure he'll be all ready to scream repent at you while hitting you very hard with his crotius. Again, I think they've done pretty well with the miniature there. A pretty thoroughly intimidating pose there. He's impaling a fallen helmet with that greatsword. Apparently that's called Catechist. He doesn't really have war gear options, but you do get some aesthetic options that you can choose. You can either choose to have his head as a hooded one or an exposed skull mask. And the smoky bits that are billowing around him, they're incense burners on his backpack. I do think they look quite cool, though I feel like not everyone's going to be a fan of those, so I think it was really quite a sensible choice to give you the option to either assemble with or without. Again, we kind of knew that Asmodai was coming due to his teaser in artwork not so very long ago. As anticipated, he's being updated with some new scaling, though I'd say for him that there isn't anything enormously that screams Primaris out of his design, not compared with maybe some of the other characters in their updates. I guess perhaps the only thing that's a bit of a giveaway is his backpack, it's got the Primaris style power pack, though beyond that there's still not much. The miniature on the right here is modelling his alternative options it would seem, that's what he looks like with his hood down. Kind of fun, but I feel like the hooded look is just so much more signature Dark Angels for me. And from these angles you can see a bit more clearly as to what's going on with his incense burners on the left there, or the option to leave them off on the right. Again, seems like a pretty fitting update compared with the older miniature, even though that one was pretty iconic in his own way. I'd certainly have concerns if he was pointing at me like that. The old one did have its incense burning smoke thing going on as well, but maybe just not quite as big and obvious and noticeable. I guess with the updated miniature, he'll need an updated data sheet to represent that power saw that he's found. Currently, he's only got rules for the Crozius Arcanum and his extra blades of reason attacks so I guess he'll get an option for something with a bit more AP. Currently his special rules allow you to re-roll hit rolls for the unit, I guess that could be handy enough on blade guard veterans perhaps. Hopefully they make him solidly efficient, as he will be competing against quite a lot of the other characters that can lead Tacticus type things. There's lots of good choices to lead blade guard if he's allowed. Otherwise for the Dark Angels, we've also got the Deathwing Knights. These guys, we had a picture of these leaked earlier in the day, and it does look like that's 100% confirmed that that was real. And as suspected, as we saw a couple of them armed with swords, and then a couple with maces, it does look like they have a full squad option to entirely arm with swords, as you can see here, or go for an entire squad worth of maces. It seems that the kit is going to be entirely separate from any mainline Deathwing unit they come out with, I feel like there's a reasonable chance they redo the standard Deathwing squad slash the command squad. So it seems that those two kits will be separate for the Dark Angels now, and they'll have two different flavours of Deathwing to choose from. Otherwise, the kit also looks like it comes with both a Watcher in the Dark and a Teleport Homer as well. Previously, it just had a Watcher in the Dark, so that might mean additional special rules for the Teleport Homer built into their datasheet. And besides the obvious choice of swords versus maces, there's also the choice between either hoods or these unique helms. I do quite like these ones, they basically look like Terminators, but feel just a little bit more medieval knight. I think the shields are pretty fun as well, with the Deathwing insignia and broken blades on them. Otherwise, here's a shot of them who are equipped with both hoods and the maces rather than the swords. It didn't look like there was any obvious option for a flail of the Unforgiven, but it might still be a thing. A few of them have the option of half helm type things if you want them. It looks like the Watcher in the Dark is being a little incense bearer here as well. A nice incense carrier shaped like a skull. Here's a photo of them where you can also see the teleport homer tucked away on the left. They are looking pretty imposing there, I think that's a pretty awesome shot of them. And here's their current rules in game. I do feel like they're fairly solid at their current rules and points costs right now. One of the more interesting unique Dark Angels datasheets at 235 points per 5. With the shields they both get 4 wounds and then are also minus 1 damage as well, so just fairly spectacularly tanky and certainly against damage 2 things, and then come with enough attacks with mid strength and high damage that most anything in the game is going to need to be wary of meeting them in combat. 
Otherwise, for the Dark Angels, that's all we've had at the moment. No official reveal of the Codex, or any launch boxes, or anything like that, but they did hint towards the end of the stream that basically we will be getting more Dark Angels in the future, which basically does confirm what a lot of people were expecting, that a full range review is on the way. Night Lords next, it is confirmed now that the new Kill Team set will be basically Chaos Space Marine Legionaries, but with a Night Lord upgrade sprue included, Though I do feel like as upgrade sprues go, it does look like a fairly generous one. I feel like Night Lords are a pretty excellent choice to see some love in Kill Team, really. While the Traitor Legions get quite a lot of interesting bits in the Horus Heresy range, in 40k they really just haven't had all that much for a long time, and Games Workshop have basically gradually made most of their unique options go out of print. This kit does look like it's got some really very fun bits, though. They've got their classic and iconic bat-winged helms, but maybe not quite as enormous wings as they had in ages past, which I think is probably for the best, as some of them were maybe a little bit comical. Their respirator grill things seem to have some disturbing teeth. Some guys managed to find around about half a dead space marine and put it on a banner. They've got loads of themed legion shoulder pads, looks like they've got enough for their legion symbol on the left one for all of them, and at least a few new ones on the right. Plenty of specialist melee options, and also quite a lot of just random adornments like bits of flayed skin, and this one sinister guy with a skull mask plus an envenomed blaze. Here's just a closer shot of a few of them. The one on the right does really seem to be going for his Primarch style as much as possible, with the dual blade lightning claws, plus maybe a head appearance that isn't too far away from Kurz's. And also they did have this fairly snazzy chainsword going on as well, inlaid with what looks like a rib cage and some skulls from a luckless victim. Sometimes I feel like their kill team upgrade sprues are perhaps a little bit lacklustre, but I think that in general this one is going to be a bit of a crowd pleaser. Good to see a legion that just hasn't really had all that much support in 40k for a very long time actually get some proper love. The existence of this kit will just give you a lot of bits that you could use on other kits throughout the army to give you a bit of personalisation with a Night Lord's theme, without necessarily having to go overboard. It'll be interesting to see what they do with any of the melee weapons. It's possible that when the next Codex Chaos Space Ring comes around, the Legionary Datasheet might gain you the option to take some Lightning Claw type things. They might or might not do anything for that Venom of Blade specialist. I think that the missile launcher design that they have is quite fun as well, one that maybe looks a bit more of a loyalist pattern one than some. Currently they've not said exactly how the box will be released, it'll likely be in a Versus box set, and there's been previous rumours that said that that was the Mandrakes kit they'd be coming alongside, so it could be quite a way to an individual release for these guys, particularly as we haven't even seen the Striking Scorpions vs Scouts release yet. Otherwise for model releases, there's a new Assault Squad for the Horus Heresy, I was wondering whether Games Workshop would do the reveal of their new army that they have coming out for the system but it seems that that's going to be saved for another preview. I feel like there's a pretty high chance that the new army is going to be Solar Auxilia, given that they're releasing that with Legions Imperialis, though if it's something like Adeptus Custodes, and that could be very interesting indeed, as that would have a lot of 40k implications. A plastic assault squad for the setting has been something that people have been wanting since day one though. Nice, brutal, and somewhat simplistic jump pack space marines hurtling into battle to fight with Bolter and Chainsword and it appears that these guys would come in a squad of 10 as well, which could be pretty interesting for 40k players to get jump pack marines on the table for a little bit cheaper. The standard firstborn assault squad has gone out of production, but this could be very very interesting for raptors potentially, particularly for some of the legions that maybe don't go for quite as much big spikes or mutations. Could be quite good for something like iron warriors or alpha legion perhaps, if you're keeping the old school firstborn look for 40k, then they could also be an option to represent jump intercessors, or perhaps even Space Wolf Skyclaws. They're the right scale with the right war gear options, and you could convert some bits that didn't exactly match up. Just might depend a bit if you want more of the firstborn or heresy era aesthetic. It could be kind of a nice raven guard as well, I guess, with the beaky helms. Lastly, for more 40k relevant model releases, one surprise that I thought was worth mentioning was the Taurus Venator. This was an old Imperial Guard Forge World model that went out of production really quite a long time ago. A fast moving light scout buggy, and to be honest something that would be really quite nice for them to have as an option in the current setting. I feel like light fast, almost like jeep like things would be something that the Imperial Guard might have, and it might help fill up their fast attack style units which have always been painfully limited in the past. In any case it seems that this one has got a new reincarnation, 
It looks like a version of the Taurus Venator is employed by the Palatine Enforcers of the Hives of Necromonda, and it's going to be one of their options for venturing out into the battlefields of the Ash Waste. In general, the vehicle kit recreation does seem like quite a good one. It is quite faithful to the original model, and you could change around the guns with a bit of conversion, I'm sure. Just kind of interesting that that's suddenly returned as a plastic kit that you could buy, and something that you could make look very Imperial Guard very easily, should you wish to. Finally, last but by no means least, we have the codexes that are coming out in summer 2024. Games Workshop does seem to be keeping the expectations and the codex previews coming. Seems that we're not in any danger of returning to the era when every codex was just around the corner and we didn't know what it would be. We still basically know the best part of a year in advance now. Already revealed were the Spring Codexes, which were the Dark Angels, Tau, Orcs, Custodes and Chaos Space Marines. Lots of really big popular factions in there, and it did feel like they were targeting a bunch of the armies a bit earlier. And they had confirmed that all of those would at least get one model release alongside them, though I don't think they've said anything explicitly as much for these yet. In any case, we now know that the Summer 24 Codexes are going to be Gene Stealer Cult and the Adeptus Auroritus. Seems that we're going with some of the more expensive 40k's factions for the summer. I guess it's going to be a bit disappointing for any of the people out there who are eagerly awaiting their codexes. I must admit it might have been nice to have the Imperial Guard codex come a little bit earlier in 10th edition, given how long that we had to wait for it in 9th. Though at the moment, technically Games Workshop is still keeping us guessing a little bit, as the third codex that's going to be coming in summer has not yet been announced. It's still redacted apparently. And that could either be just because they haven't decided yet, or it's going to be a late release and they don't want to tell us what it is. Or perhaps even more intriguingly, it could potentially be an entirely new faction added to the game. That definitely could be a possibility as well, though I'd guess it's probably less likely. For new factions, maybe some of the more obvious ones might be the Emperor's Children or maybe Dark Mechanicus, given that Vashtor's out and about. I might make a video talking a little bit more about that in the next day or so. They didn't really give us any hints other than saying that it's super secret, which again doesn't really necessarily confirm whether or not it is a new army or not. In any case though, good news for Gene Steeler and Sisters players, I guess we might get different play styles in different detachments for them. Might be curious to see what they do for the Gene Steeler Court Codex, given that the current army does sort of feel like it fits their overall play style well, and most things are kind of usable, or will be if they were at the right points cost at least. Might be fun to have a Sisters detachment that helped out melee a bit more. I feel like with a loss of Bloody Rose, things like Repentia, Celestian Sacrosants and Zephyrim just aren't quite as exciting as they used to be. In any case, I'd say it's a fairly generous amount of previews from the Warhammer World Championships. Let me know what you think of all the new models and the news down in the comments below. As always, I look forward to hearing what you have to say. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics. I'll certainly keep up with Games Workshop's news, rumours and releases. I do tend to post new videos just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help support and keep these videos coming. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, see certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, an automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening and I'll hope to see you guys next time.